Hi everybody, this is our video answer key to today's in-class practice. Remember that the directions today in class were that this was due at the end of the period because the intention is that this is not homework. Right now you are just checking your answers for accuracy. This will be turned in tomorrow for credit and I will be looking for evidence of correction. So if you get something right, please mark it right. If it's wrong, please mark it wrong and then show me how you fixed your mistakes. Let's start with number one. I will draw a line down the equal sign. I pay attention to the side of the inequality that I see the variable. Here I see y is here on the left side. So my goal will be to isolate y. If there's something we can add or subtract, we do that first. So I can subtract both, uh, subtract one from both sides. So I have 3y is greater than 18. To finish this up, we will divide by 3, divide by 3, and get y is greater than 6. To graph that on the number line, um, I'll put 6 roughly in the middle and count back a couple, and forward a couple. Oops. That will be a open circle on 6 because it's strictly greater than and greater than means to the right. Number 2, line down the inequality sign. Again, I look to see where my variable is. I see it here on the left side, so I'll be paying attention to this left side. If there's something that we can add or subtract, we do that first. I see this negative 21. I can add 21 to both sides. So negative 4x is greater than or equal to 32. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. x is less than or equal to negative 8. The inequality sign flips because we divided by a negative. Let's put negative 8. Count back. Forward a couple. That will be a solid dot on negative 8 because it's less than or equal to, and less than is to the left. Number three is the first real world question in this practice. Mike wants to rent a limo for the prom. The rental costs $125 for the night plus 15 cents per mile. I don't want to lose track of that, so I'll circle it. How many miles can Mike travel if he wants to spend no more than $200? How many miles can he travel is the unknown. So x equals number of miles. There's a flat rate of $125 for the entire night plus 15 cents per mile. I don't know how many miles. That's what I'm trying to find. And then I see no more. no more than $200. That, I know, will mean no more than, so less than or equal to 200. Solving this, we'll put a line down the inequality sign. We'll subtract 125 from both sides. So 0.15x less than or equal to 75. Divide by 0.15, divide by 0.15. We get x is less than or equal to 500. And then in terms of what that means, remember, we defined x to be miles. So less than or equal to 500 miles. So if I put 500, I can count by 100, 600, 700, this would be 400, 300. It will be a solid dot on 500, shade to the left. A sentence, Mike can travel no more than or up to, or less than, however you want to, um, up to, 
Mike can travel no more than or up to 500 miles. And stay under budget. Something like that. Stay under his $200 budget. Number four, line down the inequality sign. Pay attention to the side where I see the variable. Here I see D is on the left side. If there's something we can add or subtract, we want to do that first. And I see a minus 7, so I can add 7 to both sides. So I have 8D is greater than 48. Divide by 8, divide by 8. D is greater than 6. Put 6 somewhere roughly in the middle. Count back a couple. Forward a couple. That will be a, oh, usually I've been doing all of the, the graphing in black, so I'll change that so it stands out. Open circle on 6, and I shade to the right. Greater than is to the right. Number five, line down the inequality sign. Pay attention to the side of the inequality that the variable is located. I look here. Now I have my variable on the right side. See, H is right here. So now I pay attention to the right side. Is there something I can add or subtract? I can take care of that negative 3 by adding 3 to both sides. That becomes 8 less than or equal to 2h. 3's cross out because that's 0. Divide both sides by 2. And I get 4 is less than or equal to h. We've talked now for two days in class how we typically don't like to have our answer not lead with the variable. So to rearrange this, we want h to come over here, 4 to come over here. So rearrange. the answer becomes h is greater than or equal to 4. Notice how it was very careful to say rearrange and not flip. We have not flipped the inequality. We've rearranged it. Imagine that this end of the inequality is glued to the h. As h moves over here, this end of the inequality follows it around. If I read from the variable, this says h greater than or equal to 4. h greater than or equal to 4. These mean the exact same thing. We have rearranged it so that H comes first. Graphing it. Solid dot on 4 to the right. Solid dot because I see the or equal to to the right because it's greater than 4. Number six, postage is 45 cents for the first ounce and 20 cents for each additional ounce. How heavy a package can Julie send if she wants to spend no more than $2.25? Hint, your variable represents the number of ounces over or more than the first ounce. So that's nice. It actually told us how to define our variables. X equals number of ounces after. the first ounce. So there's a flat rate fee for the first ounce, which is 45 cents. So your cost is 45 cents plus 20 cents per ounce. And what's your budget? Well, I see here you can spend no more, or Julie can spend no more than $2.25. So we're going to set this less than or equal to 225. And because I don't want to get into the space of the graph, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Line down the inequality sign. We want to isolate x, so we'll subtract 0 0.45 from both sides. Don't lose track of the decimal. We get 0.20x less than or equal to 225 minus 0.45 is 
Divide both sides by 0 0.2 or 0 0.20, same thing. And we get x is less than or equal to 9. Now, what does this answer mean? If you tell me that her package can be up to 9 ounces, you would only lose a little bit of credit, because I understand why you would say that. However, the answer is not 9. X is defined as the number of ounces after the first ounce, because the first ounce is already accounted, is accounted for by this flat rate 45 cent fee. So 1 plus 9 is actually 10. So she can send a package. that's up to 10 ounces in weight. That weighs up to 10 ounces. Again, because that one ounce is already included, that's a flat rate fee for one ounce, and she has money for up to nine additional ounces. So, even though our answer is x is less than or equal to 9, our real-world answer, accounting for the one ounce that she's already paid for, the 45 cents, my graph is actually going to be 10 or less. If you didn't make that connection with the real-world part and you graphed x is less than or equal to 9, you would get almost full credit, maybe minus half a point, so not a big deal. But I do want you to realize that real-world part comes into play in interpreting this answer. Number seven, line down the inequality sign. I see that my questions are getting a little more involved, so I'll make sure that I pause before I just jump into moving things around. And when I pause and I look at what I have here on this left side, I notice that I have like terms that I can combine first. I've got this negative 7m and this positive 3m. Negative 7m plus 3m is 4m plus 5 is less than negative 19. Now I have a two-step equation, so I will subtract 5, subtract 5. So 4m is now less than negative 24. And to finish isolating m, we'll divide both sides by 4. And we get, oops, I think I made a mistake. I see it. Do you see it? I dropped a negative. Negative 7m plus 3m is a negative 4m. So I don't divide by a positive 4. I need to divide by negative 4. So my answer is m is greater than 6. Let's get 6 on the number line. Count back a couple. Count forward a couple. Open circle on 6, greater than 6 would be to the right. Number 8, line down the inequality sign. Hopefully we're seeing a trend in how we're approaching this. I check each side. There are no like terms on this side, and there are no like terms on this side, but I do see that I have x present on each side. So I will keep that goal in mind of x's on the left and numbers on the right. If I only want terms, variable terms on the left, this 16 can't stay. So I'll subtract that over. So I have 9x less than or equal to 79 minus 16 is 63. Bring down the plus 2x. Now on the right side, I just want numbers. So this positive 2x, that can't stay. I'll subtract 2x from both sides. 7x less than or equal to 63. It's gone. I've accomplished the goal of just variable terms on the left and number on the right, but this is a 7x, so 7 times x. Division undoes multiplication, so I will divide by 7, divide by 7. And 
and I get x is less than or equal to 9. That'll be a closed circle, closed circle on 9, less than is to the left. Number nine, you are saving money to go on vacation over April break. The trip will cost $1,800. You have saved $500 so far, and you have 14 more weeks to save the total amount. How much money should you save each week in order to have at least $1,800 for the trip? Now here, it may be very tempting to say that X is weak. But that is not the unknown. You know you're going to save for 14 more weeks. The unknown is actually in this question. So paying attention to the question really helps. How much money should you save each week? So my variable, x, is amount saved each week? How much money you should save each week? That's what we're looking for. Now let's build our inequality. How much do you already have in the bank? Well, you've already saved $500. So 500 plus, you're going to be saving for 14 weeks. You don't know how much you need to save. That's how much you're going to save per week. So 500 bucks in the bank already plus 14 dollar amounts that you don't know. 14 weeks, which means you're going to deposit X number of dollars 14 times between now and your trip. And you want to have at least 1800 So at least is greater than or equal to at least greater than or equal to 1800 And now we can solve. So we have a line down our inequality. We'll subtract 500 from both sides. So 14x is greater than or equal to 1,300 or 1,300. Divide by 14. Divide by 14. And I get x is greater than or equal to 92.86. I'll just put the math answer for now, and then we'll talk about what it means. 92.86. If I look over here, X is the unknown was how much money should you save each week? You need to save at least ninety two eighty six per week. in order to have that much money on the trip. So we have some choices of how we graph this. Um, I'll put 92, 93, 94, and then 91. 90. So this is going to be a guesstimate, right? Because here's 92. So 92.86 is going to be actually closer to 93. 92.86 right there. So in between 92 and 93, more on the side of 93. And greater than or equal to, shade to the right. You could have counted every other line. So like if this is 92 and this was 93, this would be 92.5. That's what I meant by different ways. You can count on the scale different ways. Or count by ones, and then just estimate where 92.86 will be. Last two, uh, number 10, line down the inequality sign. Pay attention to where we see the variable. I see x is on the left side. If there's something we could add or subtract, we do that first. So I will subtract 7 from both sides 
x divided by 3 is greater than or equal to 6 minus 7 is a negative 1. Really think about what this means. This says x divided by 3. We want to undo division. What operation undoes division? Multiplication. So I will multiply both sides by 3. These 3's will cancel. Multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that's why we cross those out. That leaves me x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Count back a couple, count forward a couple. Solid dot on negative 3, shaded to the right. Greater than is to the right. It's a solid dot because of the or equal to part. Let's do number 11, our grand finale of this practice. A line down the equal sign here is key, is very important, so we see our two sides. We're just going to take it piece by piece. The more work we show, the easier it'll be. Let's send in 2. We're going to distribute 2. So that will become negative 10n plus 2. And I'm just going to bring down the negative n or minus n minus 3 greater than 5 minus 8n. We've got definitely have like terms on this left side. Negative 10n minus n. And then we can combine a positive 2 and a negative 3. So negative 10n minus n is negative 11n. A positive 2 minus 3 is a minus 1, greater than 5 minus 8n. And now we're in more familiar territory. So notice how in just one step, this has become a much simpler question, become a much simpler question. We want to gather anything that has an n to one side and all the numbers to the right side. So if I just want n terms over here, this minus 1 can't stay. I'll add that over. Notice how I set myself up for success by lining up like terms. So now I have negative 11n greater than 6 minus 8n. On this side, I just want numbers. So that minus 8n cannot stay. The opposite of a minus 8n is a plus 8n. So I will add 8n to both sides. That'll be gone. Negative 11n plus 8n is negative 3n greater than 6. To wrap this up, we will divide both sides by negative 3. So we get n is less than negative 2. The inequality sign flipped directions because we divided by a negative. For the graph, couple numbers to the right, couple numbers to the left. Totally said that backwards. This is left, this is right. Open circle on negative 2, less than is to the left. That wraps up our in-class practice. Any questions? Send me a remind and I will get right back to you. Bye.